Mold making and casting is a very satisfying activity, but lack of knowledge is often a deterrent to accurately calculating the amount of material needed for a project. So more often than not, we eyeball estimate our material, knowing we will either under or overestimate our needs. The result of this seat of the pants approach leads to either costly waste of excess material or worse, an inability to finish a mold or casting by underestimating. Yet all of this can be avoided by learning how to calculate the volume of mold making and casting material. Surprisingly, it is not difficult once you know the secrets and it is a wonderful tool to add to your mold making and casting skills. In this video, we'll show you the easiest methods, tips, and tricks to precisely calculate the correct amounts of silicone rubber, polyurethane resin, or gypsum plaster you need for every project. Hello from Environ Molds. Admit it, many of us just guess to approximate the amounts of mold making and casting materials needed for our projects, but in estimating, we are very seldom right. We either underestimate or overestimate our materials. Overestimating <laughs> means waste. Underestimating means more work. Or worse, we don't have enough stock and we are caught short with an unfinished mold or casting. The good news is that with a little multiplication and subtraction, even a mathematically challenged mold maker can easily calculate the amount of silicone, resin, or gypsum plaster materials needed right down to a fraction of a gram. So let's get started. Yes, there are a number of variables to consider, including complexity of the model or pattern, the type of mold being made, such as poured versus brush on, and the type of mold material used. So we'll break down this explanation into three mold types, poured rectangular molds, poured cylindrical molds, and brush on molds. Here's a great tip. The easiest way to estimate the volume of your material requirements is to place the model in the mold container and pour water up and over the model. Measuring the amount of water needed to cover the model to a depth of at least one inch over the highest part of it represents the amount of material you'll need. If you use this method, be careful to thoroughly dry off the model and the mold box before pouring any mold making or casting material. This is especially important if you are pouring resin, as the surface of the resin will be damaged when in contact with any moisture. To calculate the materials required by weight, you should have a ruler, a pad and pencil, and a calculator to help you with the calculations. We'll explain the procedure for the more involved cylinder calculation next, but first, for a square or rectangular mold box, simply use your ruler to measure and jot down its length, depth, and height. Then multiply these three dimensions together to give you the cubic inches of volume of the container. Now do the same measurements for the model or pattern. You can ignore minor undercuts or model drafts, just measure the outside dimension, less any larger voids, then multiply the three dimensions together to find the volume of the model in cubic inches. Next, subtract the volume of the model from the volume of the model box to give you the net volume. Once you have the net volume in cubic inches, your final step to a perfect measurement is to convert it into grams or pounds if you are calculating mold rubber, or fluid ounces if you are calculating resin or gypsum plaster. To do that, you'll need to make note of some conversion constants. Silicone rubber is 0 0.740 ounces or 21 grams per cubic inch. Polyurethane resin is 0.544 ounces or 15.7 grams per cubic inch. Gypsum plaster is 0 0.490 ounces or 13.9 grams per cubic inch. To convert grams to ounces, note that 16 ounces equals 453 grams. To determine the amount of silicone rubber required, 
multiply 21 grams by net volume in cubic inches. To convert to pounds, divide that answer by 453 grams. To convert resin or plaster into fluid ounces, multiply its net volume in cubic inches by 0.544 for resin or 0.490 for gypsum plaster. That is all there is to it, to produce a very accurate material requirement of a rectangular or a square mold box. Now for something a little different. For cylindrical shapes, we need just a bit more math to calculate them. But don't be put off by it as it is still straightforward in that you want to find the volume of the mold cylinder and the model itself. Then subtract the volume of the model from the volume of the mold cylinder. To do that, we must find the radius of the cylinder. The radius is found by measuring from the center of the circle of the cylinder to its outside edge. Using your calculator, multiply the radius times itself. This produces the radius squared. And jot that answer down. Now, multiply the height of the cylinder times pi, which is 3.14. Then, multiply this answer times the radius squared, which you wrote down a moment ago. The result is the volume of the cylinder. Follow that same procedure to arrive at the volume of the model, if that is also cylindrical shaped. If it is a square or rectangular, then use the earlier step to find its area of height times length times depth. Next, subtract the volume of the model from the volume of the cylinder. Convert the answer you get by the weight constant specified earlier, and you have calculated the precise material volume needed for a cylindrical-shaped mold container. The next approach in material determination is finding the amounts needed for just brush-on applications. To calculate the amount of material needed for a brush-on mold, there are three steps. But first, we need to make certain assumptions about the material and the mold. So we'll assume the material we're using is silicone rubber or polyurethane rubber. Then we want our mold thickness to be 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter, which is the general accepted practice. We also want the mold rubber to be brushed on over the entire model with the exception of its bottom, which is resting on a supporting surface. So the exposed model to be covered will consist of its four sides and its top. If your model is more complicated, then you can simply section it off and then calculate each area separately, adding the results together to get its total area. The first step is to calculate the area that will be covered by the mold material. To do that, calculate the area of each side and the top by multiplying the length times height of each side and top. Add all the areas together to determine the total area to be covered. In step two, Multiply the total surface area times 3 eighths of an inch, which is the thickness of the rubber mold. The result provides total material volume. Step 3 is to convert the volume value you just determined into its weight value using one of the constants previously specified. It really is that simple. Calculating the exact material quantities needed on any project is just a matter of determining and then subtracting the volume of your model or pattern from the volume of the mold container and then converting the net volume into weight using the constants described. Using this newfound knowledge, you can be confident that you can precisely figure out the amounts of materials you require on any future mold making and casting project, and in doing so, save yourself both considerable time and materials costs. Thank you.